Did you inherit a website built on HubSpot or maybe you're looking to build one of your own? This quick tutorial will walk through some of the things that you need to know in order to update your website, change content, take advantage of new features, and even how all the building blocks are put together. So let's dive in. HubSpot websites are one of the most powerful new features to the HubSpot platform. Now there's always been a CMS or what used to be called COS, but now it's called Content Hub. And quite honestly, getting all of the integration of a CRM and a website together, that's really what it makes possible in the HubSpot platform. So a couple things you need to know if you've inherited a website is how do all these things fit together and how do I at least get started navigating that? Well, let's dive in and take a spin around at some of the features and how you actually access them inside the HubSpot platform. So here on the left-hand side, we actually have a menu and this menu is called content. Now, depending on your level of HubSpot, th there will be things here that may be blocked because they're available to higher level users, but HubSpot CMS or HubSpot COS or content management system is now is called content hub. So that's what you're going to see here in the menu. Now you'll see, we've got website pages, landing pages, blogs, podcasts, all of the different things inside of HubSpot are parsed out, but they all work together seamlessly on the front end for a seamless customer experience. So if you've inherited this, you may not have all the features, but let's just walk through what a website page would look like and how that functions. So when you click on website pages, you've got the view like we have here. And just like anything in HubSpot, you can actually change your views, but let's take a quick look at how we actually navigate through this area. So we can see what pages are published on what domain. We can actually then sort by published status. You can also archive pages that you don't want to appear anymore. We can also then analyze, which is looking at all the data about your website traffic, about page performance right here inside this interface, which is what I love because if you're a WordPress user or a Wix user, you have to kind of dig around or go to Google Analytics all that's built in right here. If we have landing pages, which would be subdomains, so let's say it's info dot your domain, or let's say webinars dot your domain, we can actually create a variety of landing pages, which then are used for the purposes of those campaigns. So if I click into landing pages, you'll see we've got a very similar interface. But now if you look at the domain, we've got info dot uh, simplestrat.com forward slash whatever this happens to be. So we use our landing pages for a lot of our webinars. We use them for our gated content offers. We use them anytime we do an event. So again, this is where landing pages live. And now if I go back to the website pages, you'll also notice that over here in more tools, we have content staging and you can get to where you do your menus. So again, back to the, I have a different page for a different purpose. Here we've got content staging is kind of like our development area. So if I click into content staging, this is where we'd actually build the website. So we're building pages before they go live. We can actually then stage proofs. So we're not staging them on our main domain, but all that's gonna live here in content staging. And then I can actually have a log about that information as well. If we go back to our website pages, I can view this here in a, a site map as well. So, or a site tree. And so I can see how these all relate. Otherwise I look at them in a list. So that's how your pages come together. Now, a couple of things you wanna keep in mind is every single HubSpot website is built on a base theme. So just like any other um, content management system, we have to have a base with which we have the settings and how our forms should look and how our pages should function and how should our global content features work. That's gonna be in a theme. So if you haven't set up your website yet, HubSpot's going to make you select a theme. And so we already did this because we built a theme uh, here in our uh, HubSpot environment. But if you haven't, it's gonna be back here under account defaults and then uh, general and branding or here under themes. Now, there is a free theme that's installed in every HubSpot uh, instance. And sometimes that changes. So with the recording of this video, I believe it's the elevate or the growth theme, but you're gonna see some pages you can select from here. I'll show you in just a second. But you'll see we've got our theme. If you've got one that's already installed and we change our theme, that's where this would happen here. And then you also wanna go through and make sure you update your logos. This is where your favicon's going to live is inside of this uh, logo area. And then you do wanna set the colors for your theme uh, or your, your site throughout also here back in the brand kit. So that's some very basic things about how uh, the website is set up. So if you're looking for a different theme, there's a couple options. You can custom build one. We at SimpleStrat use and, and build all of our sites on a theme called Clean Pro. So we found it's the most flexible and it gives us the most options in order for us to actually then customize on top of it or you can peruse the marketplace for other themes here. That's just gonna be up in this area here. You can click on the themes, or excuse me, on templates and find what might work for you there. Keep in mind that the flexibility that you have with HubSpot actually depends on your strategy. So I'm gonna to get to that here in a second before you just jump right into the themes. 
Now let's jump into a page and actually look at what that editing experience is like. So you, if you happen to inherit a HubSpot website, you know how to go in and make some of those changes. So here I've got us on our careers page. We've got this page made up of a global content piece. So global content pieces are going to be the piece that stays the same throughout your whole website. So this global content, if I edit this menu or this global piece of content, it's going to apply to all the other places. So if I click into this, actually I'll show you this. In the global content editor, you can see that if I make a change here, it's warning me, hey, this is a change across multiple other assets. And you'll see in the right-hand corner up here, if I make this change, it will publish to 164 other assets. So it's kind of like warning, watch out, but that's gonna be what a global header is. Usually your global header is gonna be the navigation. You might also have a footer that is a global piece of content. You may also have things like testimonial sliders or consistent pieces of how you talk about your product built into global content. So if you change it once, you change it across the whole uh, focus of your site, which I actually love. So let's go back to our page editor and take a look at that careers page we were looking at. So building blocks of a page. This again is a website page. We're editing it live in the visual editor. Over on the left-hand side, we've got these little widgets that help us understand how to do different things on the page. So this first one is going to be modules. A website is made up of a theme, which is made up of modules. And those modules then have specific things in them uh, that are features or, or core things like icons or text or images or videos. So in this case, we've got modules. So I could actually drag an accordion module over here if I wanted to add that into the page. And then we've also got, if you wanted a blog author, we could drag that in. So you have different modules available to you based on your theme. And some of those are already styled. In some cases, they're not. So this is where people get a little like tripped up. So like, well, I drug in a module, but it didn't look that good. Well, it's probably because it wasn't compatible with the settings on your theme. So again, if that happens to you, we do a lot of work and fix a lot of those things for people. But again, a couple of things to keep in mind. So we've got our modules uh, for the theme. And then if you look at the contents, we can look at the contents of the page by the types of things that we have. So this is kind of like the behind the scenes way that HubSpot's describing the page. So on the right hand side, this is what the page looks like. And so it looks very interactive, but here on the left hand side, we've actually got, this is made up of these things. So here, if I hover over this, we've got an interior header. So the header actually says career. So that's what this is. If I go back to the content and image, that's what this is here. So for our particular theme, the way we built this is we're actually editing over here in the content area. Sometimes in other themes, you actually edit in line on the page using a drag and drop editor. So again, look for that. If you can't edit right here, you may edit on the left-hand side and our section headlines and IDs, those are gonna be the pieces that you need to make those changes. Now, in this case, we can also then replace the image. So all of the images and, and graphics that you use throughout the site are gonna be stored within your file library, which I'll get to here in a second. And then we do have alt text, so on and so forth. So in this case, if I keep going down the page, I have this optimize option, which means I can also optimize the page, which if I'm having this page rank for certain things, in this case, this is our careers page, so we're not too concerned about SEO optimization, but if we had a very specific hiring campaign and we were looking for HubSpot specialists and we wanted this page to absolutely kill it, our strategy would probably be a little bit different, but we would optimize this page based on the things that it's a game is here. So just like you might have SEO uh, like Yoast inside of WordPress, this is gonna be that checklist that makes it really easy for marketers to create a page that is designed around a specific keyword phrase and do the best practices for optimization. Now I've also got a test which allows me to create a B test of the page, which might be helpful if you're trying to figure out, you know, do I wanna optimize for this specific thing? What if I put this at the top? Is that gonna be different? A-B testing available again right here in this web page, And then I've got the site navigator so I can actually then go to other pages if I need to right here in this interface. So that's the basics of how the editing in a page works. If I wanted to add a module, again, keep in mind that the modules may have to be styled depending on how your theme is set up. So if I wanted to drag in, let's say I wanted to drag in an accordion here, I would do that on the page. And as you can see, the accordion is going to be over here on the left and the accordion titles would be here. So let's say that I wanted to make this, uh, so it's gonna be, um, do you offer 401k? And then here would be our answer. So let's apply those changes. 
And then you can see that on the page, if we actually then drop this down, that's how that interface works. So again, drag and drop makes it pretty easy. At the end, we're gonna actually then update this. You can preview live right inside of the page editor. I can also preview what this looks like on tablet and on mobile. So keep that in mind as you're optimizing your website. And then we're gonna go back and you can see how that all works. So since we didn't uh, make changes that I actually wanna keep, we're going to go ahead and change this here. Let's drag this down here so it's out of my way. And we're going to delete this module. And then I'm going to go ahead and update the page. So that is how you're gonna edit a page right inside of the HubSpot website. So that's a quick thing for the tutorial. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the things that exist beyond the page itself. So if we're talking about looking at things like menus, so I'm gonna to go to our advanced menus here in the more tools area, and you can see that we have a navigation menu. Now you can have multiple menus throughout your HubSpot website. If I wanted to actually add a different menu, those would be available here. Right now I'm actually in our test portal. So let's go into our regular um, portal here and we're gonna click on our menu so you can see what our menu looks like. So here in advanced menu, you can see that we've got a default one that we used previously, and now we've also got a simple strat uh, main menu. So this is what our website looks like now, and this is how it all gets carried out in how people navigate our site. So if I wanted to add a page in here, it's as simple as adding a page. I can rename a page, I can clone something, um, and we can actually then add a menu item here. So we did add some specific um, uh, CSS or custom styling sheet so we can have our book a call button. Again, let's go to the main homepage and you can see what that looks like. We're gonna click view um, and we added some CSS. So our book a call button shows up really bright and live on the right hand side so people can actually know that's the call to action that we want them to have. So. That's a quick run around on how the CMS actually works, how to edit a page. Now let's talk about some things that bring the website together. So you're gonna have files. How do I get images and videos and all the things into my website? Well, that's gonna be over here in your library. So in our library, we've got files. So here you can see all the files that you have available to work with to build your website. Also, you can add anything in here. You can also add files at the time of editing a section. So if you then look through here, we've got images, we've got documents, audio. You can also upload videos. So all of those things can be incorporated into your website. There's also availability of stock images provided by Shutterstock inside of the website editing experience. You can also build AI generated images with the AI baked into HubSpot's website builder as well. So again, that's uh, an added benefit. Now, if I wanted to go one step further and I wanna look at the design editor, I'm gonna go back to my um, content and we're gonna go into design manager. So design manager is actually going to be where you have all of the files that live for your page templates. So what I didn't talk about earlier in your themes and settings is each website has a theme and each theme has modules, but those modules are what make up a page. So you can create page templates. So if you go back to our website and you go to the landing pages and I click into edit, let's go ahead and look at this. So we're going to click in here and we're gonna edit this page. And if I go into the settings for this page, you'll notice that this is our page name, page URL. So again, inside the HubSpot website builder, you can have your page name, you can have the page title, you can have your meta description, but down here you'll see that this is the template that I am using to build all of our landing pages. So if I click on use a different template, what will happen is we need to select a new template and here's all the theme templates. So it's a little bit of a workaround, but now you can see that when we built our site, we built all of these templates. So if I'm a marketer, I thought from the start, what are all the different templates I need to do my job? Let's build all of those up front and build them into the process. So now when I have the site live, I can just go in and actually start building things. Is our team all full of website uh, development specialists? Absolutely not. We have marketers who actually then execute based on the best practices we built here on the backside. So again, I've got all these different templates that are built so I could, re I could select a new one but for the purposes of this demonstration, I just wanted to show you this because we're not actually gonna change it. So you'll see that we've got all these templates that we built, which would be available over here in Design Manager, and you're gonna see those under our um, templates here. But we're actually gonna look at these theme templates because now you can see if I change my theme, I'm gonna have a whole different set of templates available to me as well. So that's just a quick note about the templates. Now also in Design Manager, if we click into the Design Manager, you can actually see that we're going to edit this specific module. So this is where the editing of the modules takes place. So if you're a developer, this is gonna be something that you need to familiarize yourself with. If you're not a developer, probably hang tight, don't touch it and have somebody else help you. Uh, but it does show on the right-hand side, these are all the different pieces that the module is made up of. And then each one of these, you have specified styling fields. We can also choose a specific padding. So again, this design manager is basically like the back end of what used to be, like if you're in WordPress, this is gonna be the page specific code 
that's gonna live here on the backside of your design manager. Now, a couple other places that we also wanna take advantage of, if you happen to have a private content area, let's say a membership site, or you want content behind the paywall or something like that, the memberships area of HubSpot websites is going to be the way to do that. So memberships are going to be an area that you can actually create access groups. And so those access groups means if everybody matches this lifecycle stage, for example, they can get access, or if they don't match this lifecycle stage, they can't get access. So this is where the beauty of your content and your lifecycle stages or other properties inside of HubSpot created by lists can make then content accessible or not really customize that experience. Okay, two final things for this website tutorial, and that's gonna be blogs and knowledge base. So a lot of times as a company, you have specific entries that need to be classified and searched either by potential customers, which might be your blog area, or by current customers trying to find the answers to things, which is gonna be your knowledge base. So inside of Content Hub or HubSpot CMS, we formerly knew it, uh, you've got your blog area and the blog is just like we have our website set up. We've got blog templates to show what those blog templates look like. And typically every template that you buy from the marketplace um, or we have, you know, we set up for you or with Clean Pro or something comes with how those blogs then look on that index page. So here we've got a blog called what is HubSpot and what do I, what can I do with it? If we view this, this is what a blog page looks like, very similar to those other pages, but here we've got it styled just so that we have one column as opposed to all those three columns. So every blog that we have looks like this, and every blog has built-in calls to action that we can actually track the conversion of people across the website. And then in our blogs, we also have a signature piece at the bottom, and let's eventually get to this. So we've got the author block of who wrote this, plus some relevant blog posts based on the tags or the categories that are set up in HubSpot. So again, back over here on the right-hand side, we can add different things in this blog if we wanted to, and this section is actually then used throughout the website. I can choose how many posts I want to show. I can show what other tags, these are all content marketing related. Perhaps I'm gonna look for ones that are email marketing related. Again, that changes the relevant blog posts shown here on this page. So now that I've done this, I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of that. We're not gonna save this, but that's how that blog would work. Now for the knowledge base, this is the one that I really love because even if you're not a software company, there's probably questions that people have about your services. There's questions maybe about onboarding and Knowledge Center is a great way to get started with that. Same sort of thing, you've got your knowledge base, you can set up the articles just like you would a blog and then that specific customize of the template so you can click in to edit your knowledge base and you can choose from a couple of different templates. You can choose your design here. Do I want it to look like the tiles? Would I rather have it be content rich? Would I rather have it be cards? And again, this is a little more limited because it is a knowledge base specific and people come to expect the way that this actually works. So we wanna be able to search by question. We wanna search by topic. And again, keep it super informative and helpful to the recipient. So we've got some button styles here, font styles. But again, all of this then can be indexed just like you would in your blog settings. And and we can have categories and we can actually own if they're draft, publish, archived, so on and so forth. So again, all of this in your HubSpot backend. Now I haven't even really gone into the pieces where we wanna talk about the website and smart content. We've got a whole different article in the description if you wanna check out the use of smart content because that is showing custom content to custom visitors based on different parameters, but a lot more to pack in there. And that's where the beauty of all this comes together. So if you happen to be new to HubSpot, I know this is a lot of information, reach out if we can help you. Or if you're looking to build a website on HubSpot for the first time, we do have a getting started website migration guide in the description below if you wanna take advantage of that. Otherwise, happy HubSpotting, building your website, updating your website. For more tips, tricks, and how-tos, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next week.